Today, we have a conversation with Casey Kent. She's the membership manager at Soho House and also an amazing experiential events producer and planner. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about event planning, Soho House, life. It's a great episode. If you haven't already, please subscribe, YouTube, Spotify, Apple, leave a five-star review. Thank you and enjoy. All right. Well, now we'll start. Okay. Well, Casey Kent, thanks for doing the It's Show Business podcast. <laughs> oh my gosh. I thought you'd never ask. Let's call it long overdue. So long overdue. Yeah. I'm like minorly insulted that I wasn't one of your first You should guests. be. You're going to need to come, yeah, okay. come forward. There now you go. hearing that you've been in production for two years, what took you so long? To I think ask? I asked you and you said no the oh, first no, time. Oh no, I don't think that that's true. <laughs> I don't think that's true. Then well, I will accept full blame for not asking. And what sooner. I will say is I think the timing is magnificent. Because yeah. I was just thinking, I actually love the drive from West Hollywood to Studio City. I kind of feel like I'm like driving through the Italian like mountains. I always it does, like it feels like the French Riviera. It's really nice. Yeah. And like the windows are down and the dog has like, you know, air in her hair. And like, we just feel great. Yeah. And I was thinking, I was like, 2022 is going to be an amazing year. And I think it is. This is helping it to even kick off, years right? are always great. Twenty two is also my favorite number. Always Why? has been. Why? It was like the number on my uniform. I used to play basketball and oh. volleyball. My birthday is on the second. I just like like two. You like two? I like even numbers. There's something very like stable and grounded and consistent about it. An even number. Yeah, because it's two divisible by two and it's, one i mean this is where your cfo ness is really kicking into gear i'm like oh my god yeah. please don't start talking about math i'm gonna like opt out of the combo. i lost you a two two divided by one <laughs> okay <laughs> good to know oh good to know the london gosh. school of economics made a great choice okay so here's the thing and i'm debating in my mind whether i bring this up because i i live bring with my up. friend mazin this was like an hour ago that this happened okay he asked me he was like asking me a big math problem. I don't know why. And I immediately freeze. And he's like, Casey, he said the exact same thing you just said. He's like, London School of Economics, like what's wrong with you? I should clarify, I got a social science degree in global communication studies. So right. I'm studying like the way information is transferred, like how to most effectively do that. I'm not studying accounting and I will never study accounting. They didn't make no you take interest. any accounting? No, they didn't. And if they did, I somehow evaded it. Right. I'm not gonna even like speak to it anymore, but no, it's you not my forte. You have the diploma, it's too late. I have the diploma, it's too late. You know, there's like two types of people in this world. There's like literature people, myself, and there's like mathematic people. We need both. Yeah. In order for the world to be. Of course. Who wants to do a bunch of math people only? <laughs> Certainly not me, but I do love you and I know you're a math person. I, I am a math. I'm a, I'm a both person. I'm, a, I'm art and science. Oh, hi. <laughs> you want to be part of the podcast? Clearly. It's my uh, tripod. What if there was like nobody's dog and it just came in? You're like, who? what is it? It's Studio City. Anything can happen at any time. Yeah, they. I don't know if you saw, but there's a car on uh, crates outside. No, I did they, see a punch buggy though. They, oh, the punch buggy's yeah. great. I, I like punch buggy my dog. I'm like punch buggy white. Love punch buggies. <laughs> but someone came and put uh, Coca Cola crates underneath this Tesla what? and took all four wheels, and it's just sitting there on a Coca Cola. It's so wild. The car got like jacked, basically. Yeah, it's like some '80s. The that, 80s is back. Know, the, so I was spending a lot of time on the North Shore of mm -hmm. Oahu over COVID. It's another story. But that's like a thing there. Like everyone's car gets jacked. Like they'll steal. They, I don't even know what they call it. It's like when you like strip it of all its parts and then you just strip. leave it. It's just like a sh shell. Like they of take. A yeah, it's actually scary. And you see the exoskeleton of the car just like sitting on the side of the road. And I'm like, what happened to that car? They're like, oh, like. Yeah, my kids were floored. They're like, what? The yeah, car? I mean, to do that to a Tesla is. I feel like Tesla probably has a much more advanced system of like how the wheels are connected onto the car, maybe. They're just screws. Yeah. Okay. But I did order wheel locks yesterday. When I saw that, I'm like, okay. For Studio City? Really? Yeah, it happened. Right, it's right. I don't I know. know. I'll check it out on the way out. And yeah, and Teslas have up. cameras. So this guy's probably on film. Yeah. Or unless the camera was off. I don't know. It's, I don't know. It's really. But if sus. you can walk around LA with a mask, it's kind of like. Open well, season. Did you hear? I'm, this is like horrible to bring up, but yeah. it's the first thing I think of. Did you hear what happened to the girl working at this furniture yeah, store? Yeah, we all did. It's oh horrific. I like think I was one of the last people to hear about it because I was like truly floored. Yeah. And I was thinking because that was in the dead of the day, and some psycho. I'm assuming he's deeply unwell. Well, I mean, you're not well if you stab you're, somebody. You're unwell. Let's go with unwell. <laughs> 
it's you're not going to ruffle any feathers by saying this guy is unwell. <laughs> just making sure. And I did see a photo of him. I'm like, yeah, that tracks. Like, just looks like he's got crazy eyes. And but just in the in the broad day, coming in, stabbing the fuck out of someone, and he just had a mask on, and yeah. he was able to basically be incognito with the mask. So the mask is presenting a whole other range yeah. of problems. It, it, it does feel. It feels like a strange. I still love LA, and it's my home, and mm-hmm. I'm not going to leave. But. It feels different. Like it's just, a, it's like a crime wave thing. And I know. Melrose is like crazy. It's, it's So I live off Melrose. Oh, so you know. You I got know. bulletproof vest, then, the whole thing. Um, I spent, uh, so I got COVID over Christmas. Oh, and I'm sorry to hear. It was fine. It was actually, I mean, this it was will fine. be controversial. I it. it was honestly like low key great. I can get into that. I could elaborate or not. But what I was going to say is. Is that your tweet? Is, I have COVID. Hashtag low key great. <laughs> It was great for many reasons. It was, quite honestly, it was a matter of time before I got it. I work in a very public facing yeah. uh, venue where I'm just like chit chat. And obviously, I'm you not one. You can say what it is, right? I'm not one. Yeah, I work at Soho House hey. and we've been open for a year. And the fact that it took this long, I waited for the Omicron drop and yeah. I got it. And it was not that bad. But what I was going to say. You called it a drop? <laughs> I waited for the Omicron drop. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, right? There'll be another drop soon. Yeah. It'll be the next letter of the Greek alphabet, and that'll be what it's called. I like how you treat your viruses <laughs> like a supreme store. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what kind of collab we're working with. Yeah, collab. Like, <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> there's already Delta Cron, right? That's right, a collab. There's Delta. That's a, it's a collab, and that one I heard was really bad. This one was quite mild. That's maybe why I'm able to joke about it. And I know I shouldn't joke about it. But you were vaccinated. I was, yeah. Oh God, yeah. We don't. Yeah. We we're all like vaxxed up the wazoo. Yeah, um, yeah. And we... <laughs> <laughs> the wazoo vax. Yeah, got that. Does that mean three shots? Yes, yeah. it does. And um, I was gonna. I had a point because it had to do with Melrose. Um, Melrose shot. So part of the reason it was so great was I got to quarantine with a friend who was house sitting this amazing house. Mm. We both had COVID. We figured, why not? So I got to stay at the house with her. And this house was up for sale. Uh, the owners, one I guess the owner, it's like this wonderful gay couple. He's yeah. a very famous photographer. He's done quite well for himself. They're trying to sell the house because they think the neighborhood's too sketchy. And it was on the market for $4 million. They got an offer within like 24 hours. The people buying it were buying it for their daughter, and then they pulled out because they said the neighborhood was too sus for their like early adult daughter to live. I'm like, dude, what? Wait, so, what the, you're buying a four million dollar place for your daughter? I know. There's so many. We were like, it's too many questions. There's. We were like annoyed by the whole thing. Yeah. We're like, what is wrong with these people? But yeah, the point being, I guess Melrose just has this horrible reputation. But I live two blocks off Melrose too, and I've never had issues. I'm like very, I try to just radiate positivity and I'm like, nothing bad will ever happen. And it seems to work okay. Yeah, that's everyone's uh, plan in LA. Nothing bad will happen. Just move here and it'll all work out. Yeah, or like it, it won't happen if I just like put out positive energy. Someone's yeah, yeah. not going to want to hurt me. That's what everyone underneath the freeway thinks too. <laughs> They're like, nothing bad will happen. It'll be, it'll be fine. Uh, the under the freeway setup is real bleak. I always like... I have a little bit of panic, like my palms kind of get sweaty when I'm doing that drive through any like under underpass. I'm like, this just makes me really, really sad. Yeah, it's it's sad. It's and I don't understand why the underpass. Is it just because shelter? shelter right? Yeah. Okay, you could do like a tree though under a tree. But it's not the same. Not right? the same. You want something you want that's like fortressy. Yeah, yeah, got yeah. It. Okay. Do you think it's like uh, people whose dreams didn't work out? There's got to be a couple, like a couple actors in there. Of course. I mean. You're always like, look, during COVID, I feel like this became really apparent. Everyone is more or less, except for like the upper, upper echelon. Everyone is one paycheck potentially away, (laughs) one lost paycheck away from like not having a home. And I think that's a really, really scary thought. Yeah, we're all leveraged up. Like we have to be constantly earning. Yes, we have to be constantly earning. I mean, how many people can just like float without an income for like months at a time? I mean, there definitely are people who do that. Definitely in LA more than other cities, yeah. But, you know, I left LA for a little during COVID. Well, I went, I got rid of my place. I became very like 
I'm going to be a minimalist now. I sold all my shit. Then, of course, I have to like buy back all the shit when I came back. <laughs> you called in. Jessica. You're like, hey, um, yeah, funny like, story. <laughs> uh, don't read this book. No, anyway, uh, can you give me my stuff back? I decided to spend, make the most of my time. And I was between, my parents live in the Bay Area. So I spent some time with them. And then my boyfriend at the time has a house on the North Shore of Oahu. So I'm like, I'm going to see what this life is all about. That's when I saw this, the cars that had been just yeah, you know, yeah. decimated and parts yeah, taken. I thought Hawaii was I great. Know. I like, Honestly, I had to have him explain it to me because yeah. it's, I'm like, oh, wow, there's like socioeconomic problems here as well. It's not just like a dream life with mm-hmm. like people doing the hooky lao and like right. eating acai bowls. I don't understand. <laughs> I imagine this is Hawaii for me because I've never been. You get mm. off the plane, yeah. someone gives you a lay. He, he did, he did do that. Like, but like, he did it. He There's did not it. just people. Yeah, there. no, no. But he like went to a lay stand before. He's like, uh-huh. oh, I gotta get the lay, and then he's like, Oh, you're getting laid. I'm like, Yeah. <laughs> but there's not just people there doing it. This is like not friends. that I saw. See, that's just a total disappointment. It is. Yeah, th- I think it, if you're I've going to a movies. hotel, oh, like White Lotus or something, you watch that. Or they what's do the one Forgetting Sarah Marshall? Oh yeah, <laughs> that, those are like White Lotus and Forgetting Sarah Marshall. I think really depict the island in the way that probably all the locals hate because it's so. Um, touristy yeah. like you're staying at one of these big hotels that have like they're like a big reason why tourists are coming because they get this beautiful experience those places they do lay you but it's not like at the airport yeah see i'm, so when you I'm step picturing off the like property. You're, you're yeah you're walking off the plane mm-hmm. like jackie kennedy you get a lay mm-hmm. yeah and then you're car takes you to your thing wow and it's probably more like you get off you're sweaty yeah, you're, you're looking sweaty. for your luggage the air you're like you see a big jack in the box you're like fine to- totally yeah i mean look there's a few areas where it's like incredibly developed and you've got these big beautiful hotel properties and then everything else i would say just is like looks like anywhere else in the country but you have like the beautiful the nice climate and the great plant life and animal life and i mean the place is magic uh, it's got to be right yeah it's got to be otherwise george clooney wouldn't do a whole movie about it what was the movie he did uh, he was like a hawaiian <laughs> he was it was a big movie it was, it was one of his biggest movies okay. he's like a hawaii like surfer guy i forgot the name of it Is and he, it like, and he like looks movie? over a fence i don't know okay he like looks five, over a fence it, it was in the in the trailer okay, we're, he gonna, like looks, we're gonna offline yeah we need like hey someone google that for us and then that would come joy in. google that for us she's yeah. looking at me she's got a little dog computer <laughs> beep 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 <laughs> it only comes I back. I love that we just like food. humanized her so much. Oh, what, her name's Joy. Yeah. So I have a tripod um, named Joy. She. You should say meaning, why you're calling her a tripod. Okay, so she's got three legs. Is um, that like dog term for? Yeah, three it's. I think that's a technical term. Is it really? I think so. Yeah. Because I have three tri- six tripods. Oh in here. right, got it. Totally. Yeah. I mean, she kind of stands similar to the way these are standing. Yeah. Yeah. She like kind of moves her front leg to position it so she's got that triangle shape anyways can i just mount a gopro on top of her and oh, she can be, she can be like the roaming cam we we need that next episode she's that is gonna definitely be, yeah. gonna give us a more interesting shot yeah of her stationary. doing a lot of yeah. licking <laughs> <laughs> she's just chilling right now well let's but say yeah. let's say how we met so okay, we met cool. at uh kid in the corner which mm-hmm. is, was a record label or still is and record label meets creative agency Cre- creative agency and, yeah like, experiential house yeah and you were doing experiential events yes and and we're like kind of the master at it let's Thank be honest you. made summer concert series and you are the reason the comedy bunker exists because you had morgan J oh, perform sorry. at your summer concert that's series right. and my head went comedy show let's do it here and that was the genesis of it so it was you and morgan J. I actually didn't know that yeah that's really cool and i've been to so many of your comedy bunkers when it was in the bunker yeah and i followed you to the kibitz room and now we're gonna get you 2022 the best year ever we're gonna get you into soho house love it yeah i mean who knew the cfo of our company which was you yeah obviously was also like moonlighting as a comic and now is like really well at, renowned in the in the world of comedians in LA, which I feel like is the most competitive world ever. It's competitive, but it's also embracing. Like I found a lot of people that I really connect with, and mm-hmm. I've made a lot of great friends. Yeah. Like I find it's more embracing than music is, because yeah, because music people are trying to be cool usually. Oh, I I mean I have I won't share them all here because yeah. someone will get angry, but I have strong opinions about the music industry in LA. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that that pretty much sums it up. 
<laughs> you're at Soho House now, yeah. which is a great place. I've yeah. been going there since 2011. Yeah, it opened in 2010, so you're one of the OGs. Yeah, it, um, it's changed a lot. It really has. I how, say how it used to be changed? a place where famous people hang out, and now it's where famous people's assistants hang out. I, I'll correct you on that. Okay. We, <laughs> like, I can't, I'm again, I can't name names, mm-hmm. but there was a big emphasis post-COVID um, coming from the founders and the C-suite to bring the sparkle back. They yeah. literally, that was the word the, that the they sparkle used. Did leave. It was the sparkle it, it left, left, Yeah, and I will be the first to acknowledge it. In fact, I was a member at Soho House up until about 2017, and I joined right when it opened. So yeah. I, too, was like 2011, 2012, I think. 2017, I I stopped wanting to go there for just that very reason. It, and I could list all the reasons. These are all things we talk about internally all the time. Yeah, yeah. And so COVID for us was a really amazing chance to, to reset because we were able to kind of like internally discuss like, what do we want the house to feel like? We're actually opening a second house. Do you refer house. to it as the house? The, oh yeah, oh, sure, With a capital H, Yeah, actually, to you. <laughs> <laughs> we're opening a second house in West Hollywood so then the conversation became like how do we distinguish the two what makes our original West Hollywood house special what is going to this new uh, we're calling it little house West Hollywood it'll Mm -hmm. open in the spring what's going to make that house special and then like how do we bring back that original essence you know that made it so exciting in the first place especially in this landscape where every other day I'm hearing about a new members club yeah so many of them yeah Yeah. obviously we're the first and we're the best so yeah obviously (laughs) no I always say like when people are like people are like oh like what do you think about this place or that place I'm like it's honestly it's apples and oranges like I do think there's something for everyone yeah and we're busier than ever like yesterday I was there midday like two, three in the afternoon, packed, not a seat to be had and just vibey as hell. And in terms of celebrity attendance, I think you'd be shocked. It's gone up now, like crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's a really fun place to be. Yeah, and it is, the food has gotten way better. Is that a thing? I don't know if that's like a conscious effort. Is it a question or was that a statement? Well, (laughs) it's a statement from me. I think it's gotten better, but I was kind of like throwing it on you to be like, is that planned? Oh, another another topic I have so many opinions about because as you could imagine, so I look after membership yeah. at West Hollywood. So I'm there most of the time. I'm on the floor. I'm talking to members a lot of the time. I'm getting feedback on what is great and what is less great. Yeah. So I hear about the food a lot. We Okay, the thing about the food at Soho House is it's consistent across all of the houses globally. Like the same menu? Basically. There's oh, like wow. a couple things that differ, but the thinking is... It's TGI Soho. Yeah, ex- <laughs> Ouch. Uh, the thinking is that you could be at the Shortage House and you could have the same dirty burger that you eat in West Hollywood and you feel like you're at home. Oh, right? that, that's nice. Yeah, so there's consistency like, with that. I mean, it works for McDonald's. You, know, you get the <laughs> okay, same. Okay, enough with these comparisons. <laughs> these are global chains that are very successful, Casey. Let's... But like, it's, right. We think of it's ourselves like, more as like, I don't even know what I would put it. Because I want to say like a Michelin star restaurant, but it's not that. Okay. It's something. Could you get a Michelin star? I don't think so. <laughs> like not after what, what I've like, seen. What is, what's the criteria for that? It's a lot to do with like pa- wine pairings and stuff. Oh, I mean, no. We're just we we want. I don't think to there's be... a Michelin star restaurant in L.A. If there is, it's like one sushi really? place. Yeah. Oh my gosh, we should look that up. Uh, I think it's um, and, offline. And Naka is like the first. Interesting. one. Interesting. All right. Yeah. Well, we're definitely not there. We're just trying to have comfort food that is consistent and tastes delicious. Mm-hmm. So you know, it's pizzas i like the truffle pizza is my favorite i have that probably once a week we have burgers pizzas like simple salads the whole thing we are starting to do a pop-up downstairs in that restaurant that like a lot of people don't even know exists it's right when you get off the elevators yeah yeah straight back. back yeah yeah it's a Mexican restaurant now. We did a Chaconis pop up there. That food's amazing. Chaconis is like Chaconis is great. Yeah, yeah, amazing. So, and we're gonna keep rotating that out. So that's so smart to keep it fresh. Yes. And, keep it- and if anyone listening is a restaurant owner, works in the business, has an amazing concept, we we're we're very open right now. We want to work with someone and bring them in and have them just like take over the kitchen for three to four months. That's amazing because it keeps it fresh and also keeps the LA like Chaconis is a very LA thing, and then it becomes like. 
Because I miss the days when you go somewhere and you're like, oh, this isn't somewhere else. Yeah. It's not a chain. It's like local. You're somewhere special. I know. And we want there to be options and versatility so that when you come, you're not like, oh, the same menu for the millionth time. Yeah, yeah. Because some people are, some members are there every single day. Like Every day. Have, yeah. Some members get there right when we open, seven in the morning, and they're like, here I am. And they get the same breakfast every, you know what I mean? So we want to be able to continue to deliver consistency, but also also have like variation in case someone wants to venture outside their norm. Yeah, because I, I imagine it gives you the same thing as the hotel without staying there. Totally. Right, so you get the hotel experience and like a place to go that feels at home, but it's not. Yes. Because everyone needs to leave their house. We're all sick of being home. Yes. We spent more time at, we didn't even know our ho- homes this well. We were like, I my know. home is this? You like you notice know every crack every, and crevice. Yeah, every paint crack. You're like, how do I not see this? They're like, oh, because you're not here. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, we want it to feel like your home. Of course, that comes with a few caveats. Like you can't just run amok like a wild person. Yeah. Which we do see on no occasion. No laptops, which is a nice change. So we do have certain areas where you can use your laptops. Uh, how do we both honor the fact that all of the people who are members are creatives who need to work and are coming here to work, but then also have it be a social club? What if you check in your laptop and then just hand you like a pad and paper and be like, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you write an email and then you rip it and you hand it to like a butler on the silver tray. Wow. And he takes the, the tray over to like a typist and then puts it on a typewriter and then the typewriter guy puts it in a computer and, and that person emails and it. W- think of the jobs you'll create. Think of the jobs we'll create, but that journey just sounds exhausting. I mean, it sounds magnificent. <laughs> if you're the piece, who, what piece of paper no one's gonna do that. wouldn't want to take that amazing journey? What piece of paper? <laughs> Are you like a pen to paper type of guy? I thought I was, but now I'm back to the computer. Yeah, I... I I don't like my handwriting, so I don't really like to write. I do feel more connected with what I'm writing, but I find that when it's in the computer, it's more useful. So it's like a of course, because you can sync it with your phone and like like I yeah. use my notes on my oh, phone notes all the is time. like a, yeah, it's a godsend, especially for a podcaster such as yourself, or just like little ideas you have. Like you write it down, and then it's there, and it's in your computer. Then yeah. you take a c- computer and you edit it, and it becomes a thing. Oh yeah, no, I'd actually be like embarrassed. If for someone to go through my notes because they're so random some of them are work related and then yeah like to your point random thoughts like mantras that i want to say affirmations i tell myself you know what i mean like it's yeah. just such a hodgepodge morgan jay told me about the mirror work he does oh i could Did you do mirror work i don't do mirror work but i know of all about it i'm just it. excited you know what it is of course, You're like, of course i know what it yes, is You're like i am beautiful he's i am the type fantastic of person, he's the type of person i mean look He's a great performer. Yeah, so and he good. needs to hype himself up because, you know, if he doesn't, who's going to? Yeah, and yeah. like he's he's crushing. He's blowing it. up. Yeah, yeah he's great. I think yeah. that his mirror work has probably paid off. He said it on stage. I'm like, oh mirror work, what's that? And he told me all about it. Oh, that is too funny. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, Morgan J. You know, I have to tell this quick story. Do it. I don't even know if he'll remember it. So when I was working at Kidney Corner, Morgan and I were friends and he you know, he's like a very He's a very sexual person. I can tell you that. I <laughs> <laughs> Go on. And he would always like make comments to me where I would just be like, oh God. And one time he said. So you've seen his act. No, I, I haven't. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you meant something else. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right. What do you mean he's seen his act? His act is what he does on stage. Yeah, his act course. on stage is sexual. It is. Yeah. No, he does a great act on stage. He's an amazing performer. Yeah. He's one of the only people, maybe the only person I've seen who utilizes music to perform. Didn't we see him together? That one so far sounds where we all were you there yet? It was like a group of it was like me, Katina, you, Mungo, Yana. I don't know if I was there. Okay. That the, was first the first time, time I saw him was at at Kid in the Corner. Oh, no way. Yeah. So that the reason he was ever at Kid in the Corner was because I went up to him at the So Far Sound show. We were sitting all in the front row. And I was like, dude, you're amazing. We were like, sitting on the ground? Mm-hmm. Okay, I have I was, a picture of I it. was there. Yeah, I thought yeah. so. I have a picture of... of I that was like my second day. And like we're yes. sitting on the ground. I'm like, this is going to be yes. a great couple of years. Okay, so fast forward like a few months later, we're friends. And he says to me, he was like, you would look... He was like, I really would love to walk down the red carpet with you on my arm one day. I feel like you'd look great on my arm on a red carpet. And I was like, that is the weirdest fucking compliment I've ever heard. But, but I'm going to take with it. You. I'm going to take it. It was something like, it wasn't like, you're so lovely. Like, let's hang out. It was like, yeah, you'd look great on a red carpet on my arm. I'm like, okay, this guy is so... And it made me realize he's hardwired. Like, he just wants to 
be the best, like be successful, be on that red carpet. And he's already imagining like what type of a chicky he wants on his arm. Yeah, yeah. And it's a, it's a great um, creative compliment. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know how he still feels. And I certainly haven't gotten any calls. And I'm sure he's walked some red carpets. But yeah, I wish yeah. him all the best. That's good. <laughs> no, he is great. And it's great to have him. But what, so you do a lot of these events. Mm -hmm. And like, what do you see? What tips can you give people doing events that you see like they're not doing right or that can make, take their events to the like next level? Like performance based event? Or what do you mean? Like in terms of organizing an event. Like, mm. if like if you were to ask me, I was like, you get the lighting right, get the presence. Like, the yeah. whole thing. Every, the second you see where you're going, it's a thing. Like I've gone into shows before and there's people vacuuming. You're like, I don't know oh if this is gonna, even if it gets better, you're like, that takes away from the event. Uh, so it's yeah. like, cause it's mystery, it's showmanship. It's, it's mystery involved. Yes. And the Soho House is like that too, because think of your founder. He's like blue light laptops completely changes our aesthetic. Yeah. So, okay. My dad taught me a word. I'm probably going to butcher it, but it's uh, synesthesia, 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 synesthesia. It's, I've never heard that word. <laughs> it's basically like, it means multi-sensory. It's like tapping into all okay. of the senses. And that's a great name for a creative agency. I think there probably is an agency like that. Like I've seen the word before and I'm yeah. like, oh, that's cool. It's like becoming a thing. So what I always think like about my with dad events. dad invented that word. Yeah. <laughs> My Daddy dad's like very it. cerebral and heady. So when he could tell that I was just very excited about events, I always have been. I was like producing my friends when I was four years old. Like I've always loved Yeah, you're a take charge kind together. of person. You're like, this is not good. Let's go. Blah, totally. Blah, blah. I'm very take charge with work and, and events and everything pertaining to that. But in my personal life, I like to be a little bit more low key and just let other people. Oh, yeah. When I say out. I'm here to see Casey at the Soho House, everyone's like, oh, Casey, uh, <laughs> go right up. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> They're apologizing. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I didn't do anything. They're like, oh, just go. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Well, you know, you, we, we're a tight team over there and we're all trying to make sure everyone is well taken care of. Right. Yeah. Unless you're an asshole and then we don't want you there. But you're such a lovely, wonderful person. So I'm oh, glad thanks. you're getting to meet all these people because we want you there more. We can switch. If you ever go to Guitar Center, say you know Latif, <laughs> and they'll all be like, oh, sorry, how what? do you want your breakfast? Why? Because I've bought so much stuff from them. Seriously? Like yeah. all this equipment? But this, but for Kid in a Corner, for like every company I've ever oh, worked wow. for. So yeah. I've actually never stepped foot into a Guitar Center. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You're not missing anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But wait. So to answer your question, synesthesia multi-sensory so when i think about events i think about like all the senses and tapping into it so on the most basic level you don't want a room to smell like shit if you're walking into it you yeah. want it to and you want to consider i had a setting. candle because we're in my garage know, i'm like I just saw. to get rid of the I garage smell we i gotta. love that so you got to think about the sound what's the music is there a playlist is you know yeah and, music totally music is huge is there live music is there a dj like i take all that really really seriously and it's just sometimes the most simple things and you don't even when someone starts to notice something in a bad way that's when you know you haven't done your job right so like the fact that you noticed a cleaner means like okay they did not have their shit together they should have been cleaning the space like that morning or the day before yeah. right right or maybe i was early who knows but it's yeah. just like there's a magic because it's what are we really doing? Mm -hmm. We're just putting a couple things together that everyone knows about yeah but why it's like baking a cake there's ingredients on the shelf and then there's a cake. If we don't get in the middle and make the cake, there's yeah, nothing. Totally. And there's so many different ways to make a cake and yeah. everyone's going to have their own style. Vegan I cake. I learned really young sort of the style I wanted to have. Um, I really, you know, communication obviously is key. I can't tell you with events if you haven't communicated something and you show up the day of and you're like, what the fuck? Like, why isn't this here or that here or that person yeah. doing this? And it's like a disaster. Also, like never let them see you sweat. Um, my mentor Sounds has like a Muhammad story. Ali or something. Yeah, it's like just never let them see you sweat. Like my mentor and who's them? Kirsch, like your staff or the just people? Anyone? Anyone? You don't, you, you're cool, calm, and collected all oh. the time. So Mitch, who I worked with when I worked at Vice, his name's Mitch Kirsch. He's like event producer extraordinaire. He did like the Olympics in Beijing. He's done like a bajillion VMAs all over the world. He tells a story where he was standing with clients during an event and, you know, back of house is all going on. Everyone used to wear these like radio walkie talkies with a little guy in your ear and you'd be like, uh, 
Casey for Mitch, and you say go for Mitch, kind of thing. Yeah, it's really yeah. fun. Um, they don't do that anymore. I don't why? know why. It sounds so fun. And it's so fun. <laughs> it's like you're a secret agent. Exactly. You, and, and it's like you know, yeah, yeah. You just like press a button, and it's like you're live. And if it was a really big event, there'd be like different channels. So you'd hop yeah. on to like the operations channel or the F and B channel, and blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. So he tells the story. He's like hang with the clients. Talk shit and, channel. On exactly <laughs> my favorite channel of all. And Mitch would be oh he's on radio and he's talking do to do to the clients. I think it was like Disney or something. And they come on radio, they're like, Mitch, there is a fire in the kitchen right now. Uh, half the kitchen is actually up in flames. And he's just, uh, he's like nodding, talking to the client. He's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's like, okay, sounds good. Just <laughs> never, like, literally then having to go and put out fires. Sounds good, four foot flames, uh-huh, yep. Two kitchen people dead, okay. Making note, calling the funeral home, got the hearst. Um, notifying their families right now. Thank you, Casey. <laughs> so it's, a, I do think it's a certain type of brain that can just like, compartmentalize it's like military. yeah but also see everything as a whole yeah. so it's like this can all be going on and you can see how it all works together like my brother no disrespect to him because he's brilliant but he can't like a logistic for him is like a to get him to a place at a time is like a big fucking deal what does he do he he's a he's brilliant actually he's an author and a consultant for chinese companies he speaks fluent mandarin He's amazing. Oh, uh, he yeah. is, sounds amazing. So that's one tip is like make sure for experio events like you're cool, calm, and collected. That's cool, a great calm, one. Cool, collected. Yeah, and like never let them see you sweat. That's gonna be the title of the episode. See, never let them see you. sweat. I'm sweating, but never let them see Are you sweat. You? No. Oh my god, I'll get a really strong antiperspirant. No, you just want to be cool, and you don't want to ever like be yelling or screaming. I used to see these women when I was younger because there weren't a ton of female event producers. I worked. My first job was at this uh, events agency called The Visionary Group that was led by like two guys who've been with the Brent Bold House, like mm -hmm. SBE kind of way, which ruled nightlife at the time. And I was the only woman and it was those guys and they had a whole crew of a bunch of dudes and I didn't have female role models around events. And I'd seen other women who worked in like publicity or like, you know, kind of events and they were just so mean. Like they were, and I hate to use this word, but they were bitchy. And so I was like, oh, am I supposed to be like that? And then thank God my mentor, Mitch, who I worked with at Vice was like the nicest, most just kind, cool, just thoughtful person. Treat everyone the same, pay respect to everyone, treat your vendors the same way you treat the clients. And like it creates a healthy environment and everyone's gonna look to you to see how you're acting mm -hmm. and that's gonna emanate throughout. So that's always been the mindset I have. And if something doesn't go right, it's like, whatever, who yeah, cares? Yeah. You just like move on, don't stress about it. And Soho House, every day is an event there. So if I was getting like amped up, I'm not yeah. even joking no, by I'm the sure way. It's, like, yeah. Even if we don't have any events, it's, it's an still event. an event. Yeah, that's like the tagline, <laughs> every day is an event here. That's when they go down market. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly so if you're not cut out for that then probably don't work there <laughs> yeah that's a good life lesson in general because like we all i'm we're 90s people grew up in the 90s yeah totally so best decade best decade but it's also like it was a lot of glorifying the like the the ragers and like the like yeah. entourage like throwing pencils at your assistant oh God, and yeah. like the very <laughs> which is it was very entertaining uh -huh. but like that is dead yeah, in terms so of dead. like acting like that in the workplace mm -hmm. or any environment like you have to be able to be strong and get your work across without being that person totally yeah i actually think it's, it's a great time I, I think it is hard but i'm i'm glad we live in this time over so that tempting time. to throw a pencil at somebody i know i mean shit yeah <laughs> sharpen throw <laughs> I could see you in your like early days. No, I, I I was the recipient of some pencils. No. For sh oh, for sure. Yeah, in the studio. It's awful. Yeah, I know. Oh my god, Scars. no one's throwing a pencil at me. No, I'm just I would be no pencils. Would, yeah, you but don't want to get on my bad side. No pencil throwing. No, you don't. Definitely, <laughs> I've seen the <laughs> the casualties of war. Let's call them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's like how because we all want to be liked in this new society too because it's like hey like me like my post i'm likable but also mm. it's very hard dealing with artists to tell them the truth in a way yeah to be to say no this is a town that hates no i know it's just ghost I no know. is a ghost yeah but you in order to have boundaries and i and i do think in order for people to respect you using no appropriately is one of your best friends best tools yeah 
Yeah, people have already asked me, like, oh, I heard you know Casey. Can you help me? I was like, no. Are you being serious? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but with a ghost. So, no. I mean, look, I'm... How do I say this? I'm always down to talk to someone. Yeah. I really am. Like, I think I'm very generous with, with my time. And, like, I genuinely like people for the most part. Yeah. But in my 30s, the best thing I ever learned was you have to create boundaries. Like, otherwise, people are just going to be all the time take, take, taking, take, 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 yeah. take, take, take. And if you say no, they actually respect you no more. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. like, all my days off, because my, my, my phone, for example, has just become an extension of my email inbox. Like, the text I get, I'm like, oh, okay, this is just someone who needs something. I go silent. On my days off, um, yeah. The I treat notification them. that I'm away mm-hmm. has been the it's best. It's so great. That is game changer. I know, yeah. but I'm confused because a lot of people have it on and then they're still texting with me. So I'm like, are you here? Are you not here? Yeah, but it gives you the option it to gives, be like, yes. Oh, I, I, yeah. Completely. It's kind of a great compliment. Like, oh, they they went through their silent yes, notification for me. I know. I'm like, well, as I like, should wow. because yeah, like time is money, baby. Yeah, and I'm yeah. only sending texts when I absolutely have to. My phone case, I just changed it, but it literally says don't call me on it. Because I'm just like, no more phone calls. Like on please. the back? On the back, Are yeah. You, you're right on the phone and it says don't call me. You're like, yeah, yeah. That's such a power. Is that what it says? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just swapped it out because I, you know, I like to keep it keep it cute. Yeah. Treat the phone case like an accessory. But it's so story. how do you deal with saying no to people who want to be members? With Sohas, we're really focused on do you work in a creative industry? That's like, important, right? It's the probably the most important thing. Yeah. So like if you're a power realtor and you want to join it, mm. it's not for it's, you. It's tough. Yeah. Someone asked me this morning, actually, what's like an immediate no? And I said finance, which is tricky because now you've got like venture capital and you've got all these people in crypto right. and like doing all these things that you could Finance deem. is art, artsy now. I guess. Yeah. I, I think it depends on the person. So if I'm interested in getting to know someone, I will reach out and say, hey, can we like get on the phone for 10 minutes and I can in 30 seconds. You you know, I feel like most yeah, people, yeah. you can kind of get a vibe for someone really quick. Right. Be patient. Right. Be patient and see what happens. Well, it's good that it's stuck to its creative roots of being like music, creative writer, yeah. that type of crowd. Because there's lots of clubs for other people who don't do those things. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Someone was telling me about a club that is specifically for like the finance bro and the yeah. real estate broker type person. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no, house. Oh, no, you didn't get in house. <laughs> Yeah, I won't name what it's called in case. Yeah, we know what it's called. Um, <laughs> uh, do you have a favorite house? Well, West Hollywood, I have the most history with. Yeah. I've had some like really monumental things happen at that house, and I'm there every day. So it's my favorite. But beyond that, Shoreditch House is so freaking cool. When Where's I was living that? in London, London? Okay. yeah, I got to hang out there a lot and it's just really fun like a very cool young spirit it's like exactly what you would imagine a really i don't know like sceney so yeah. house is yeah, like. yeah. And, and i went Malibu. to one in london but i don't know which one it was yeah there's a bunch it was one it felt like it was a lot of laptops it was kind of multi-level <laughs> a lot of laptops it was a lot of laptops <laughs> okay it, it, this was probably before not the laptop. anymore <laughs> this is this is 20, when I went to school in London, so okay. it was 2012. Look at us. Look at us. We're such but, international. Um, We're Anglophiles, huh? I love, I'm I, a I'm, huge I'm Anglophile. I'm like, obsessed with British culture. Yeah. I, it, let's all be honest. You had to pick any accent. You pick British. Oh, one million percent. English, whatever. Yeah. Like, that's the best accent. Yeah. I live with a Brit. I'm obsessed. Do you really? Yeah. He's amazing. He's Lebanese and British. He's my really good friend. I've known him for like a decade. Yeah. So and just like I like the um the properness. They dress well. Yeah. I like funny. the rain. I like I like rain and overcast. Eh, the weather, I'm like I like rain and overcast for a few days. Like yeah. I was thriving during this latest little stint in LA over Christmas. Amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. But beyond that, like you don't want that every day, Latina. No, you don't. Yeah, it's what true. are you talking about? It's like perfect outside. But then LA's this is what bugs me. It's like it's <laughs> Too cold, then too hot. And like the, the window of is great. It? Yes, the window is small. It did go small. from like 50 to 80 real fast. Yeah, it's gonna be like 105 next week. Is it really? No, I, but you, oh. you know what I mean? Like it's gonna feel like it's, you're like, it was too cold. Because t- the houses, everything here is built for like nothing. There's no insulation. So that's it's what you're, you're more of concerned because the house environment becomes problematic. Like yeah, it's just wise. not. Yeah. yeah Things that So House doesn't need to worry about, I know. obviously. Well, we can't, I mean, this is not, we, I feel like it's always too cold or too hot in there. I have to say, we have to figure out our thermostat but yeah it's 
it's not it's not a real problem <laughs> i used to go to the berlin house a lot oh um, actually funny story about the berlin house that could be my favorite house i think I'll it's tell my you favorite why. yeah why did you like it i thought it was the most um uh like less the least pretentious in a way not mm. i wouldn't say so house is pretentious yeah. but like it just had like a realness and totally. like coolness and like where it was it just it felt and this is like so house berlin like 2010 oh wow like 20 or 2011 like yeah. early and it just felt so cool so it's um the building is really interesting i think it was occupied by the german nazis and then later the russians during world war ii so it's got all this history to it which i just think is so interesting but that's berlin for berlin's you, right? like bullet holes and then coffee like, L- oh, literally like, yeah. literally and i went granted it was the dead of winter and i was sort of miserable because i'm yeah. just not well suited for that but the venue shocked me and okay a little bit about my background i grew up um with parents particularly my dad who was like a full-blown hippie turned businessman my dad lived in big sur he was like og at this place esalen yeah, all about the kind of potential legend. movement total yeah so and nudity was like never weird for me like okay, I went that's to not Esalen. where i thought this was going but all right <laughs> okay. cool yeah just keeping you keeping you on keeping your me sharp. Like, uh-huh. and this is why i mention it so like uh, yeah nudity was never a big issue so when i went to berlin i really wanted to check out the spa so i went down i was actually solo i was there with my friend who had an art show he was doing his art thing i was hanging out and the spa is amazing there and i think i was signed up for a massage but of course you know you want to like use the facilities so i like whatever got my little robe and then like blasted into this room immediately was like oh no i thought i went to the men's locker room because there's just nude dudes everywhere yeah. like hanging out on rocks like with steam like you know it was just, it was really dramatic right and i'm right. like oh my god this is a nude co-ed spa which is like <laughs> it's not the spa it's the restaurant you're like all right cool <laughs> uh <laughs> i was so startled and it was just huge like it sauna and steam and everything was just together and people were just naked chilling out like 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 bath like a bath so a co-ed spa at bath? soho house and it was startling for me and and i just then someone was like oh yeah you know the germans like they're just like that i'm like is that true and then i learned that they are i learned i wasn't <laughs> at soho house <laughs> what a night <laughs> so if you ever are traveling through berlin it, so they still have a nude oh yeah this spa? was like two years ago oh wow okay mm-hmm. <laughs> i like germany i had a great time there i like i wish like, i wasn't there in the winter but yeah i would love yeah, to, the weather, to hang out there i just more. think that people are cool and they're like they're like kind of uh artsy and fun and very nice they're eclectic and i they speak english that. very well usually yes. and you're like i had a great time always being there yeah i mean yeah. i've only went, been to berlin so yes i am for like two days okay <laughs> But it's a good time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So to wrap up with events, mm-hmm. who's like the event Don right now? Who's like someone who's just like killing it? Wow. I mean, I, I can't lie to you. I'm a little out of the game. The first thing that comes to mind is such a bizarre answer, but they do do the best. It's freaking Revolve. Really? Yes. The company Revolve with all their Revolve around the world, their Revolve Fest. You know, they IPO'd like, I want to say two years ago at this point, and they just crush. They crush. They have such good name brand recognition and their events are so hyped and they do a beautiful job. Like I remember at Revolve Fest, they were competing with Coachella and they were winning. Like there were more people attending Revolve Fest with its like eighth of a size in production to Coachella's, you know, beast, Golden Voice beast of a production. Yeah, and they yeah. were winning. So we'll see. I don't know. That's what came to mind. I'm sure there's individuals who are doing more so that I'm just not thinking. Yeah, of. yeah. But that's a great example because it's readily accessible. People can look it yeah. up. And it's a public company, which brings in your, hey, stock. I went to London. Yeah. Oh, you bought some stock? I bought and- some Revolve when they IPO'd because I listened to my friend's podcast and he's they're really tight, that group of guys with like, I think it's Raysa and I'm spacing on the guy's name, but I was like, oh, I, be- I believe in what they're yeah, doing. Yeah. And I'm I'm up, I'm doing well. I mean, everything's kind of nose diving right now, but yeah, yeah. I've done pretty like well Like right now? It. Yeah, <laughs> as we speak. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, when did IPO? I think two years ago my sense of time is really messed up right now yeah everyone's is in this last it was um, two years ago because it was when i still had my own my place in la yeah it was like right before covid do you feel pressure to make yourself into a brand as we all are in social media 
Good question. Um, I have never really taken social media too serious, but this year, and I'm just being very honest, I want to put some more energy into it because I actually think it can be really fun Yeah. if you're just making it fun. And if you're not doing it to like get followers and get yeah, endorsement yeah, yeah. deals and all that, I could care less. Like I'm very happy with my full-time job at Soho House and my life, which is somewhat private. And I do want to keep it that way. But I think there's a way to showcase a lot of other things and have fun with it. And yeah. the amount of people who reach out to me on Instagram now for work things. I totally forgot beyond, your dog was here. <laughs> she's chill, I told yeah. you. You're like, what's that? Yeah, yeah I think it's important. Like I never thought I would admit to it because I've been saying for years, oh, social stupid. You don't yeah, need yeah. it. Like just live your life. But I'm kind of seeing the value more. What about you? I feel the same way. It's like if you want to be an influencer, that's a whole different thing. Yeah. And that's not what we're talking mm-hmm. about. But look at like the most famous richest man in the world, Elon Musk. His companies don't do PR, mm-hmm. don't do advertising, but it's basically he gets a lot of power and influence through the social platforms. And so if you're trying to compete in that space, you can't argue that it doesn't add value. I know. And some people it adds value and be like, I'm more happy being off it and that's its own value. So we all have a choice. Totally. Like so many famous actors like Keanu Reeves or whatever, like not on any of them. And I think, I think that's cool too. too. Cool and respect it. Um, But if you're trying to build your brand and, it can really help you I think and so. it's access because i get so many people that find me as the first place Same. of contact i know and i know people immediately when they meet me will like, like you know what i mean i'm just like okay i should be doing something over there yeah yeah people and if it exists people are going to look at it and it's going to be usually the first thing that comes up on search i, know. I did major cleaning i like arc arc archived almost my entire feed because i was like this sucks <laughs> i think we all have a tendency to like kind of self-judge and yeah, be like yeah. oh god like that's not me like ah so i didn't delete but archived archives yeah yeah and like definitely making more of an effort to take photos and be more intentional about posting yeah well you're in communications so you know you studied it you studied it at usc but didn't study accounting but i did study that yeah well casey kent this has been amazing (laughs) tell everyone where to follow you and your socials so my handle is quesadilla it's a childhood nickname and people still call me it so it's spelled like c-a-s-e like my name casey a and then Dilla. You okay, like Jay Dilla. Way. Yeah, and I'm I am posting more Soho House stuff. We're able. It's no photos at Soho House, but yeah. membership is able to evade those rules. So I think that's another reason I should post more. It's like kind of a window into. Something I love no that, photos. I know me too. And the is the photo. To booth still there? Yeah, okay, it is. Yeah. We actually have a second one now. We have a little content studio where you can record podcasts. You guys have a podcast studio. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Yeah. So you're, you should come through. Yeah, we'll do a live pod there. That would be really fun. So fun. I'd be curious to know if you think it's like up to snuff. It's essentially, it's not like this. It's just, it's like a room and it's got like record. It must have mics like embedded into the walls type of thing. Oh. Yeah, it's cool. I've seen people do podcasts in there, among other things. Maybe it's the whole so house has mics embedded in the walls. I wouldn't no. be surprised. I wouldn't be Deal. surprised. We well, respect so, privacy. No, what I'm are you just talking totally about? kidding. Super <laughs> private. And uh, let's say bye to your doggy. Bye, Joyzy. Bye, Joyzy. Thanks again. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for tea. Bye.